Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you something I've been wanting to do for a while. I was inspired by an artist on Instagram, and I will tag that person in the description box. But this cake is a fondant ribbon cake. I hope you like this one. And it's also got some abstract, um, flexible gum paste flowers. And that's what we're going to do first. Now, I'm, we'll link the recipe in the description box, but basically what I'm doing here is I'm combining some Tylos and some powdered sugar. And then I'm taking some water and mixing some oil into it and also adding some edible glucose. Now you mix that in together till you get it basically combined. And then you pop it into the microwave to uh, get everything to melt into each other. And at this point, you'll mix your, your um, dry ingredients into your wet ingredients with your spatula. Get it as incorporated as you can. Add some more corn flour. I'm sorry, it wasn't powdered sugar, it was corn flour. Add some more corn flour to your work surface um, and then knead it all together. Now you want to make sure that you're not adding too much of that corn flour so that it's not as, as elastic as you want it. If you have too much, just put it to the side. You'll know with the touch. And then I added some of my Color Mill blush color to it. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I wanted them to be fairly pale because I was going to do some petal dust on it also. And then I'm just using this rounded petal cutter and I press them into my I think it's my peony um, veining mold you can use any of them you can use your rose ones whatever you have even a, a leaf one that doesn't have well no let's stick away stay away from the leaves any petal pattern will work and then just soften the edges with a ball tool and then I'm going to put them inside of this um, egg crate I think that's what you call it. Um, it's actually not an egg crate. This is a mattress pad that's never been used on a mattress. <laughs> Just so that they um, get a little bit of movement to them. I know this is the flexible recipe, but I wanted them to kind of set up just a little bit with this flexible um, gum paste or flour paste. It will harden over time, but they are, um, they stay flexible way longer. And then I'm just using these um, circular small foam balls, basically. And I put a wire in them using some, um, some hot glue. And then I just brush them with water. And that's all I'm using to get these petals to stick. Now, the first two petals, I'm just kind of overlapping them on top. Like I said, this is abstract, so it can be anything you want it to be. And that is what's gonna cover the center. And I did this with three of them. Now you can use edible glue if you prefer. I added a link to an edible, edible, um, edible glue recipe on my um, video that I uploaded just this past Sunday. So go back to that if you want the recipe for the edible glue. But I find sometimes with gum paste, just plain water works for me just as easily. It's a preference thing. And as I'm working with these, I'm setting them aside when I move on to the next, the next petal or the next um, flower. And once those centers have set up enough that you can work with them, just take the rest of your petals and um, add some of your glue or your water and just add them towards on the very bottom. And just kind of overlap them. Again, since these are abstract, uh, kind of fantasy flowers, they can be however you want. I didn't want them to be too, what's the word? Symmetrical or too perfect, um, which I actually kind of fight the urge to always try to make things perfectly symmetrical. I know in nature, things are not always perfectly symmetrical. So. In fact, most of the time they're not. So I kind of wrestle with that a little bit. <laughs> it just kind of, I think that's from my Wilton um, classes I took at the very beginning. We were taught to make things very symmetrical. Now that might have been a more um, 
2010 <laughs> way of doing things. Um, and now I have switched more into the abstract world in a lot of my designs. So still working on getting my mindset changed on that. Now all my flowers are setting up. I actually put them on a wire rack since we have those, um, the wires, the floral wire in the center. I just kind of make a hook on the end of those floral wires and hang them from um, one of our wire racks at work. So they're hanging upside down, especially since these are the flexible um, flower paste ones. I wanted them to dry upside down so that the petals aren't opening too far. Now when I say dry, I mean um, firm enough so that they're gonna hold their shape. While that's happening, because you don't have to leave them overnight. That's the glory of this recipe. Um, I will, like I said, leave the recipe in the video description. If I forget, leave me a message. Um, I try to see my comments all the time, as much as I possibly can, and I will add that. Just the last video, I forgot to add the link in there, and I went, I did go back. If you happen to see that, I did go back and add that into the, uh, the video description, the recipe for the edible globe. Anyway, okay, those are setting up. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to our cakes. And I believe, I was so busy talking, I didn't even, I wasn't even watching the video. <laughs> I believe these were all chrome coated, which a chrome coat just locks in your crumbs so that you're a thin, it's a thin coat of buttercream to lock in your crumbs. So your final coat is a smooth, perfect finish and there's no crumbs coming through. And I set them in their, the freezer to chill for 10 minutes after the crumb with the crumb coat and then I bring them out and do my my final coat of buttercream and I find when they are chilled in the freezer your buttercream kind of sets up as you're working with it and um, you have to move a little faster but I find I get a better finish and then I popped them back into the freezer while I am working on my fondant this is um, uh, I'm not sure if it sat nice might be satin nice, yeah, satin nice, navy blue, and I added a little bit of black to it, black fondant, because I wanted a very deep navy blue. And the navy blue was fine the way it was, but I wanted it deeper, so I added that in there. And then I just made my discs for the top and the panels for the side by measuring the height and the circumference of the cakes, cutting them a little bit more, leaving a little excess, Letting them sit for a few minutes, maybe 15 minutes to firm up a little bit before I apply them onto the cake, which had some corn, uh, not cornstarch, some shortening on the cakes to get those to stick. Well, those went back in the refrigerator to set up while I worked on the fondant ribbon. And all this is, guys, I just rolled logs of fondant and I use kind of the heel of my hands to kind of pinch in a, an edge on the top. That's all I did. That was it. And then I lined them up on my counter and kind of made my pattern that way. I just kind of arranged them as I went. I had a general idea of what I wanted because I was kind of going off of my inspiration, the inspiration that I had found on, on um, Pinterest, not Pinterest, on Instagram. Um, now I didn't have the picture there. I just kind of used that as a a basic inspiration and then I kind of did my own design based off of that what I had in my mind so this is that section right there is for the bottom tier I wanted it to be a little bit bigger and kind of to angle off to the side and then this smaller one is for the top tier I didn't want as much on the top because it's a smaller tier but I wanted the two to kind of work together and this is the final pattern I came up with on the countertop. And I took this picture as, so that I could have my phone next to me and have that sitting there to remind myself of where these puzzle pieces fit in. Now you might not get it exactly right, but it, it gives you the general idea anyways. Now I've stacked my two cakes together. I put some dowels in between, cut to the height of the, small, of the bottom tier, added some buttercream, and then I stack them on top of each other and then I'm steaming the cornstarch off do set this in your refrigerator for a good half an hour before you steam it though because you want your fondant to set up a little bit because you're adding you know basically water 
to the outside of the fondant. And if it's not already set up and firm a little bit, it's just going to get kind of saggy. And you don't want that. So take the time to let it set up in the refrigerator. And then once it's already kind of sticky there, that's when I am putting on my fondant ribbons. And those have been sitting on the counter this entire time. So they have firmed up also a little bit. And um, just using toothpicks that I will remove later to anchor them in place. And then I'm using some um, edible gold leaf. And this is Barnabas Gold, which is my favorite. Okay, I can't say not sponsored, because yes, it's sponsored, but it is my favorite. <laughs> and I will leave a link where you can get your own too in my description. And I will try to remember to put my discount code in there. Again, call me out if I forget to put it in there, okay? Because you can get a discount if you use my code. And again, doing the same on the top and anchoring it with your toothpicks and then adding my gold in there. And I'm using the tweezers because it's kind of hard to get your fingers in those small, small crevices. And then I put that back in the refrigerator to set up for a little while. I know these videos are sped up so you don't see the time involved, but I would say about an hour. And in the meantime, I worked on some other projects and I pulled my flowers out and I added the petal dust to them. And once I have this firmed up, I took the toothpicks out by twisting them. Don't just pull them out, twist them and pull them out. And then I'm just simply adding my flowers and the um, wires to be like branches. And there it is all done, guys. I really hope you like it. This is one of my favorites. I have to say, it's definitely one of my favorites. And please take the time to like, subscribe, and share. And I'll catch you on the next one.